Let's give it up for Katie Gill Martin. Thank you, everyone, thank you. Thank you so much for coming out tonight to honor and celebrate our ancestors and to honor and celebrate the artists who are yeah. exhibiting here tonight. Why don't you all move just down this way? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can do a little, you know, you can sidle, you can <laughs> shimmy, you can pirouette if you want. Excellent. So, um, so I always feel like I get to have a front row seat uh, at, cre at the art of creation um, when um, I'm teaching this workshop. And uh, one of the things that's most beautiful for me about it is getting to see what I think are two acts of creation. You know, creation requires courage, it requires endurance, and it requires faith to like wrest something new from the universe, you know? And um, I got to see these artists do it in such beautiful ways. And when I look at the, this wall of art, which is here, and by the way, the show continues downstairs on the first floor, so be sure and see those prints as well. When I look at these works of art, I see two acts of creation. One is the creation of these prints, and the other is the act of reaching for a connection to ancestors. And um, for me, it is, it is so powerful because each artist does that in their own way, and these prints are a record of their reach. So I'm going to ask them to introduce themselves. Just introduce yourself. Um, hey, I'm Shannon. Hey, Shannon. Hi, everyone. My name is Nubi. I'm really excited to be here. What are your pronouns? Uh, she or they. They, them. Uh, hi, I'm Fernando. Uh, he, him. Hey, y'all. I'm Christine. I use she, they pronoun. Hello, I'm Benny. Uh, they, them, their pronoun. Benny. Oh, you're right. <laughs> hi, I'm Samantha Maria Espinosa, and I use she, her pronoun. <laughs> Woo! Hey, I'm Maya. Um, I use she, her. Thank hey. you so much for coming. Thank you for coming. My name is Queen Crimson. They, them, he, she, she, her, whatever you want. Woo. Yeah. I'm Sho, and I use they, them, hers. Sho! Yeah. Woo! Yeah. Yeah. Sho, can you stand up back? Woo. Bernie, would you like to begin? Yep. Okay. Can everyone hear me? Yeah. 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 All right, awesome. So, oh, actually, we, we, we prefer if you use the microphone for folks that might have a hearing impairment. Sure. Okay. One of our roles. All right, welcome, George. Um, I uh, just want to acknowledge that um, I come from uh, my um, ancestry and my culture. I'm just going to introduce myself in a proper way. Watch me, Kudun to me, Chau Yuval Yo, Chau Yuval Chachikai, Chau Yuval Um to me, and Chau Yuval Chamami, Chau to Chau Fernando Miguel. Uh, I'm Fernando Miguel. Hi, how are you? I, I welcome you here. And um, I was just want to thank uh, our Mother Earth and our mothers and our sisters, our Father Sky and our fathers as well, and our brothers. And I want to acknowledge that we are here on Ramatush, Ohlone, uh, Coastal Bay, Miwok, uh, Matsun, Mutsun uh, oh. land. And I just want to acknowledge that the people have always been here, the people will be here, and we continue to strive to make sure that they are recognized and that we acknowledge them and we respect that, and that we are here to honor them um, and our, honor ourselves and honor our lineages and our ancestry. And just want to thank you for being here, and I just want to say that. Um, I'm proud to come from my Mayan ancestry. I come from the Western Highlands of Guatemala, from the Cajubal Nation people. Um, and I hope you enjoy the show, and I hope you acknowledge yourself, each other, the land we're on, the space we take um, a part of, and have fun. who have, they've just been the most wonderful host and do really fabulous work. So can we have a little round of applause for Strut and Drew? Oh. Yeah. And if you need condoms before you go, they've got condoms. Uh, okay, so we're gonna have a short panel. The artists have developed questions and um, we'll start with, would you like to tell us what inspired the work you did in this workshop? I think for me it was just like my 
more cognitive, just like thinking about what ancestors are and like thinking about who's around me, who's what inspired my work. It's definitely similar, but also just like coming to class every week and seeing everyone else and what they came up with really fed my own creative, creative process as well. Um, I'd say what inspired me was definitely um, nature, Mother Earth, um, people around me, um, my cultural uh, identity, my queer identity, um, and also performance as an artist and also um, drawing and using this medium as a, an art form definitely inspired me. Um, for me, I've been thinking a lot about intergenerationality. Um, so um, something like a huge, I always think of myself in a very liminal space. And in terms of thinking about ancestry and intergenerationality, I'm thinking about how liminality is not just something isolated within ourselves, but something that's felt throughout the generations. And um, I think that's what I was thinking about when making my prints. Um, I think it's uh, an exploration of gender um, through nature and uh, ancestry. Um, I feel like I really tried to honor the legacy of all the women identified folks that I know within my chosen family, and I feel very lucky to also know um, generationally at least three to four generations down within my family, which is very important for me. Um, so it is an honoring of their legacy and their labor and all the work and time and emotions and love that they put into me to get into the space that I am now. So I feel like that is an honoring for me. Uh, for me, it was my family, my chosen family, my ancestors, um, and other people in the class whose work really inspired me and kept like, the desire to keep creating. I think for me, I'm just really angsty and have a lot of feelings all the time. <laughs> 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 I would say a lot of my inspiration has drawn from my own experiences as a fat, formerly incarcerated um, queer person and queer trans person. And so it's, um, yeah, that's where it comes from. Um, there's a lot that inspired me that I don't think I can fully articulate, but I think um, the things that inspired my work here um, were uh, this idea of returning to myself um, and honoring myself and honoring all that came before me. So, you want to hold on to that show and send it back? Is that okay? Yeah. Uh, if you care to, could you tell us about one ancestor that helps you sing your song? Um, for me, this question is kind of difficult because I don't think there's one ancestor. I think there's a lot of unnamed ancestors. Um, the forgotten ancestors that um, aren't recorded in history, aren't documented, um, aren't given space, and, and for me that's that's what it really moves me to, to do this work. So. Everything was so sad. And <laughs> also, um, one specific ancestor was my most recent one, my best friend Martha Walker, and she taught me the greatest lesson, which was myself as, as the best gift I can give to anyone, my true self, and so this is me being my true self, um, and then honoring her in that way. Um, I guess one person, um, my mom had a, like a gay best friend when she was my age. <laughs> um, actually, um, he died with, like, a few months after I was born, but somebody I think about a lot. Um, for me, it's uh, one of them is the artist um, Trinidad Escobar. She's uh, <laughs> from Bay Area. Uh, her medium that she uses a lot is comics, which really um, is how I would like to express myself when I'm doing print making. Um, and her work really um, is really vulnerable, and it talks a lot about trauma and her experiences as a queer person and a queer film. So I really uh, was inspired by. Um, I feel like I am very much so inspired by the bisabuelas and my abuelitas. Um, I also feel like because of my connection to my culture, I'm from Virginia and Americana, that I am very connected to a lot of the um, women and queer folk who have been disappeared, who have um, been hurt, whose voices have been 
silenced otherwise. Um, I feel very connected to them as well. So I feel like when I'm accessing my art and my creativity and my essence, I'm also accessing them. Amongst uh, many inspirations, uh, Lynn is one of uh, my inspirations that helps me sing and inspired uh, this hummingbird print on the wall right there. Um, and uh, Lynn helps me sing you through uh, following the heart and creating with nature. Thanks. Um, when I think about ancestors, I often think of uh, um, Elizabeth Taylor Johnson. Um, Big inspiration for me, I would say, is uh, more of an energy, and, it, and that is um, the female and feminine energy. Um, um, and our sisters, our sisters in the past, present, and future sisters. And I think um, I grew up with a lot of sisters, and I love that. And I'm grateful for that. And with that, I think I take that a lot into consideration with my artwork, and it really fuels what I have and what I want to show and what I, what I want to create. Um, so I really want to honor Drew Jordan, who is a really famous um, Caribbean American writer and activist. And something I thought about in the workshop a lot is that um, as an Indian person growing up in America, I didn't really get to learn about many Indian people or South Asian people. Um, and that has, I feel, the loss of that now. But um, through this workshop, I also get to adopt Drew Jordan as my ancestor and many other ancestors, which has been really uh, empowering. Hmm. Cool, cool. Um, I think what's inspired my work is just like looking around the world and seeing the people besides me who have been here to support me and also like this romanticized way that I think about mythology like has influenced my work a lot and it's cool. Thank you. Okay, one more question, um, which is what has, it, what has it been like for you all to work in a group of all queer and trans people. I know for some of you this was your first time getting to do that, so I think we'd love to hear about that. And it's been really dope, really heartwarming to like share this space and being able to connect in this way where like most folks can't. So super cool. Amazing. <laughs> That part, and also <laughs> with that, um, I feel like I, you know, I'm able to come into my own and just accept uh, people around me, accept myself, and be fortunate enough to come into a tribe of people who are just freaking amazing. Uh, I think for me, it was really transformative because prior, um, I'd always thought about my queerness and experience of gender um, in isolation, um, and just being around folks who think about, who feel very deeply the same things and more, and more nuanced experiences. Um, it's been like it's been a real blessing because I walk away with so many more friendships and um, yeah. <laughs> um. I would kind of say I really like the intentional and tender um, conversation that people have. Um, I feel like I could write an entire dissertation on this. <laughs> but um, <laughs> but um, I want to point out that I feel really, really thankful and really grateful that I've been able to be in community every week with queer and trans people of color specifically. Um, I feel like the emotional intelligence and the beautiful things that every one of them brings into this world has absolutely shifted and changed the way I think of myself and I think of the way of interacting with other people within my community. Um, I feel really, really grateful for them. And yeah, like I could just keep going on and on, but that's all I'm saying. <laughs> yeah, it was really amazing. Um, every week I felt like really tired after work and then it went to the class I was like really tired 
And then I got there and I was like, wow, I feel so energized afterwards. I felt so, um, like all the conversations that we had were so thoughtful. Um, and I learned a lot just from listening to people and it really, I don't know, it was, I wasn't expecting every time what it would be like, but every time I just left with something, feeling something different. And I had a lot to reflect on for the next week um, that came. And also just in general, like I felt really, um, like the other people in the class were so supportive and I really struggled with final cut and I didn't know what I was doing. So it was really nice. Like I felt so much um, love and support like uh, through my struggles and just how tiring it is to uh, do the art sometimes when you have to print the next day and you're so like tired but you still have to keep carving. So that was really helpful. Yeah, it was really, really fun. Yay. Um, <laughs> I, yeah, I like, I haven't really taken an art class since middle school and it was just really wonderful how supportive everybody was. And yeah, you're, you're all awesome. <laughs> um, working with a class um, full of queer and trans folks were beautiful because I got to know them as artists and I've been doing this practice for two years now so I had a little experience on my hands but um, I really enjoyed watching their progress and seeing how transformative everyone was in their art and reflecting themselves and I think it was a beautiful way for me to feel vulnerable and actually show my true self and start that process with this family so I'm very grateful for that. Um, for me, I guess like there are so many spaces that just aren't made for us that that don't want us there and I think to have a space where um, you don't have to explain yourself you, and everyone else around you just gets it um, is so transformative, so generative, so healing um, and and I think it gives you an opportunity to really process all the trauma that you carry um, and mourn collectively um, all the childhood versions of ourselves, young adult versions of ourselves that never got the chance. So I'm really grateful for um, everyone here. So I'd like a big, huge, warm, lovely, lovely <laughs> Watch me cool, cha untu nin, cha untu cha Fernando, cha untu cha uh, Maya, cha untu cha Western Highlands of Guatemala. Uh, uh, Yuval Dios, Yuval cha Chica, Yuval cha Mamin, Yuval cha Bech. Uh, hi, my name is Fernando Miguel. I come from the Mayan um, uh, heritage and ancestry and lineage. Uh, thank, uh, I wanted to give thanks to Mother Earth and our mothers. Uh, I want to give thanks to Father Sky and our fathers and our sisters and our brothers. Uh, I come from uh, the Canjobal Nation of Guatemala in the Western Highlands. Uh, I just want to say that my cultural heritage has definitely impacts the way I think, the way I produce my artwork. A lot of um, a lot of the work is nature based. A lot of the work has a lot of female energy and a lot of femininity and masculinity um, um, opposites. 
um, and both coincide in a lot of intersectionality of where I come from with my cultural resonance and my historical resonance and my queer resonance that I um, share with myself and with others. Yeah. So I guess with my work, I really wanted to explore this idea of returning to myself. Um, I think a lot recently I've been um, really mourning the childhood and young adult versions of myself that never really had a chance and um, so much erasure that happened in my own childhood um, and kind of unpacking all that and connecting to my ancestors, connecting to all that came before me um, and really just seeing where that takes me. So I think that's, that's, that's what I was re just really trying to do with my work. So. Hey, um, so my name is Samantha Maria Espinosa. Um, I use she, her pronouns. Um, I am trained within printmaking. I did four, I did four years at California College of the Arts, um, and I graduated with a BFA in printmaking and textiles. Um, and I feel like when I applied for this class and when I applied for this course, um, I was really open to just being in a space with other queer and trans people of color. Um, and I just really wanted to be in community with other people who wanted to create in this space, having been inside of an institution with predominantly like white folks who didn't understand my work or didn't understand anything that I was speaking to. Um, and I feel like within my work and within a lot of the creative things that I try to do, I try to access this like very emotionally charged um, content surrounding being like a woman identified person, being brown, being queer, um, coming into my queerness through feminist um, and highly identifying with nature and highly identifying with things that symbolize um, brown women from my culture. So yeah. Um, so hi, my name's Leah. Um, so this is a print that I did of Anna Mae Wong and um, she was like the first Chinese American um, Hollywood star and she was also queer and I think she's a really um, interesting figure because she starred in a lot of movies that were like had a lot of very sort of stereotypical portrayals of Chinese American women and like her characters would always die like they would either commit suicide or they'd be murdered by their lovers um, and it was uh, yeah her, her movies are like I think really interesting to watch now because they're just I mean they would just be racist now, but I think they were really, at the same time, very important at the time. Um, and I think she's really cool. Um, and oh, this is hard. <laughs> um, but like, um, but I th and I really wanted to sort of um, capture, I think, what I imagine to be sort of maybe the anger or the rage that she um, like held within herself, and try to put that in a print. So. This is based off of a photo that was taken of her by Carl von Vechten, who was a sort of a white patron of the arts. Um, he's most known for like being a patron during the Har Harlem Renaissance, but he was also a creepy like white man. Um, and um, this is a picture he took of her. And so and in the original, it was her surrounded by flowers. Um, so I wanted to make this into heads just because that's just creepier and angrier. Hello. Um. My name's Sen Mendez, also known as Queen Sen Sen. I'm from West Oakland, California. And this is my piece, which is the Marsha P. Johnson piece. Um, I created this piece to dedicate to her as um, an ancestor of mine. And I believe that um, the values she held when she existed um, are the same values that I hold now and I've really appreciated the work she's done and the legacy that she's um, have left for us here. And so um, I've been doing block printing for two years now and it's been a really therapeutic process for me. Um, in this workshop, I just fell right into my own method and didn't really feel different from my own ritual that I hold at home when I do lino blocks. And so it was really exciting to be in a space where I get to share that process with nine other people and also have that same therapeutic process that I have for myself and able to be vulnerable and actually 
build a family with them and share healthy love and relationships. And I think that was something really valuable for me in this workshop. And so um, I know that the history, Marsha, Marsha Payne, no of mine, Johnson left for us, is the same legacy that I held during this workshop and now and forward. Hello, uh, my name is Benny, Benny Gordon Muir, and this is my print, uh, Here in Another World. Uh, it's both a figure, a character, as well as a self-portrait, um, and it kind of touches upon the multiple layers and multiple things going on at once, even if they contradict each other. So this kind of myrrh butterfly exists um, throughout the contradictions and the confusion. Um, and I'm from San Francisco, I guess I forgot to say that. <laughs> yeah, so my name is Neely, and I made this print, Disha and Sushanga, after a news article that I uh, read when I was 15. Um, and it, it was the first time I'd ever seen um, a South Asian queer person ever in the media anywhere. Um, and unfortunately, it was announcing Disha's suicide. And oftentimes, I think that that is the way that other queer people find out about queer, other queer people out there. And in this print, I wanted to break that negative stereotype and re-envision what Disha and her partner could have looked like um, thriving. Hey, y'all. My name is Christina Viva. I'm one of this year's artists from Queer Ancestors Project. And this year, I spent a lot of time thinking about um, liminality and intergenerationality. Um, so um, how do we create a sense of ourselves based on history? Um, what does that mean when um, those histories aren't really ne written down or have been erased? Um, and I feel like it was a lot of, a lot of the times when I think about queerness, I often think about it in loneliness and um, in isolation. So when I started Queer Ancestors Project, it was really transformative for me just to be around um, lots of queer and trans folks, but also just sharing how deeply we felt about things. And um, when I was thinking about this piece, uh, I was thinking about myself as an ancestor and how um, I was learning, like, the first... Um, it's like talking about this need and yearning for shared kalaoban, which is like a shared identity or kapwa. Um, so really trying to understand myself in relationship to others. Um, I feel like that's me. <laughs> so hey guys, I'm Shannon Prasad. I feel like a lot of my inspiration was the folks who are around me, I feel like they're very like inspirational people and like really implement the work that I do because like what does it mean to be a queer answer ancestor or like a queer predecessor I feel like it's us and anybody else who does the same kind of work and I feel like I want to make like the proclamation towards our work and that's cool so yeah so I think what my inspiration was for the artwork was like just like checking a look about the people around me because like there are a lot of like art homies that like I really are inspired by and especially with these works that I did like it's a really romanticized mythological kind of piece that I did so really cool I don't know but yeah Welcome to Fernie, who is going to dance for us.